All right, guys, let's go and get started. So first off, go and pull up a document you want to edit, mainly for this practice. Next, go and select an area in your document where you want to insert the image. Up in the top left of the screen, there's going to be a tab called Insert. Click on that. Right next to Insert, there's going to be a button called Pictures. Click that, and it's going to pull up your Pictures folder. From here, go ahead and pick a picture you want to insert in the document. For this exercise, I'm going to use this TTU logo. All right, this picture is a little big, so we're going to lower this a little bit. And a little bit more. There we go. All right, now that we have an image in there, we definitely need to know how to wrap text around it. Now, the purpose of wrapping text around this image is to keep the image and the paragraph in context with each other. Usually, you'll see this in school books where it shows a picture of an animal right next to the description of the animal or something to that effect. So you have your options up here with the position and the wrap text. For this exercise, we're just going to use wrap text, which you can also choose from this little indicator right here. Click on Layout Options, and it's going to show you six different options below the default option. You first have square, tight, through, top and bottom, behind text, and in front of text. For this exercise, we're going to use square. Notice how square creates two invisible borders, both vertical and horizontal, to the text. If you want to change the style, you can change the position or the wrap of the text later on. Also, you should notice a little symbol to the left of it that looks like a ship anchor. This is your anchor tool. The purpose of an anchor tool is to keep the text and the object together. So in this instance, this image is tied to the paragraph where this anchor tool is landed. If I wanted, I can move this anchor tool on any other phrase or paragraph. For instance, we'll move it with this one. Now notice that the image doesn't immediately move to the next paragraph. That's fine, it's still anchored to it. As I said before, if you want to change the position or the wrap of the text, go to Format up here near Picture Tools, and then you can select Wrap Text or Position. Whenever the paragraph gets selected or moved, You'll notice that the image also gets selected. When you move this paragraph, the image will definitely follow it. So we'll put it right here. Notice that this image also kept its wrap format in the square format. An index is necessary for certain reports, especially longer reports, to highlight keywords. It'll list keywords and their pages in alphabetical order. To start, make a new page at the bottom of your report by going to Insert and Blank Page. Next, go back up. We're going to find some words that we definitely want to mark the entries on. To mark an entry for your index, go to References at the top of the page and click on the button in the Index section called Mark Entry. He's going to pull the mark, going to pull the mark entry. entry. From here, you can type certain words, or you can even double-click some words as you want to enter in. Let's pick a few, such as Sprint. Double-click the header and the mark all. Prototype. Click the header, mark all. And we're going to repeat this process a few more times. All right, now that we've chosen all of our mark entries, we definitely need to start working on our index. Go ahead and close out of the box. 
you'll notice we'll be seeing a lot of symbols and the mark entries we've made. To go back to the normal view, go up to the left on Home, and in the middle, click the paragraph mark. Now to create the index, go back to the blank page, and back to References. In the Index section, click Insert Index. Now you're going to see a lot of options in this menu. We're going to, go and list them off, see what they do, and they'll let you experiment with them. So we have the type, the number of columns, the language, right aligned page numbers, tabulator, and the formats. Now if you don't want to make your own format, they have some pre-made formats you can check out such as from template, which is the standard, classy, fancy, modern, bulleted, formal, and simple. But for the sake of this exercise, we're going to make our own real quick. So first, we're going to leave the type on indented. Run-in will bring the page numbers in closer to the keywords, so we'll keep indented for now. On columns, we'll go and put three. Keep the language at English, and for this one, we'll right align the page numbers. Now, me personally, I like using the tabulator with the dots, but you do have other options. You can have a blank space the dashes, or the underscore. We'll stick with the dots for this exercise. Once you're completed, go to the bottom and hit OK. As you can see, it pulls up a very basic look, nothing too fancy. But if we wanted to change the index entirely, all you'd have to do is select the index, by clicking any of these words, and then hit Insert Index. We'll put it back to two columns, and we'll change it from From Template to Formal. It's going to ask you if you want to replace the Select and Index, and you say Yes. OK. Now it has an alphabetical list going from left-handed side to right-handed side. If you find that you want a different markup entry, or you simply want to add a different markup entry, go back to the top or to any page you'd like to choose a word from. Go back to Mark Entry. Select the word, now that we have another markup entry, it won't necessarily show in our new index. So go ahead and click in the index, and we're going to hit Update Index. Now as you can see, it added Expo, the word we just selected in the markup entry, into our, into our index.